Let's do some news! My name is Mike P, aka Phony. Today's date is March 4th, 2022. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Did I say that part already? Well, just in case. That's me. And this is chat. And this is Sunday. And we've got some news today. Holy shit. So it has been a week for humans in general. A specific subset of them have had it considerably worse than others. Who are you? Did I say that part already? <laughs> so listen. As if, unless you've been living under a really fucking big rock, you guys all know that Russia is invading Ukraine, right? Uh, so that's had an impact on everything. Everything. Uh, it also has had impact on... Oh, I just realized my... <laughs> Ukraine colors was awesome. Uh, so I just realized that, uh, sorry. Uh, so so uh, it's also had uh, an impact on streamers and other gaming related things. So we're gonna talk about that stuff today. So if you're somebody who is maybe a little bit overwhelmed by what's happening, you're following too much news, you're getting just like bombarded by all this, it's too much, then just let you know, we're gonna talk about that for a little bit. All right. Uh, we don't even talk about COVID anymore. COVID bad, wear a mask. Unless you don't have to. Or if you're like me, just catch COVID once every fucking 18 months and then don't worry about it, for fuck's sake. While still getting all my fucking boosters and shit. I'm fine though, it's fine. I've had a sniffly nose ever since I had COVID, so I guess that's my long, my long COVID is that I'm gonna have a sniffly nose for the next fucking year or whatever. It's had a massive impact on me, massive anxiety for the last week or whatever. Yeah, no, that's, and that's, and I recognize that. I recognize that 100%, which is why I'm putting it out now consider it a warning or whatever, right? Um, <clears throat> grab your cat, grab your, grab your puppy, grab your friend, put them in a lock, whatever, whatever makes you feel good. Try to avoid all the news. Well, well, I have a clip from a Ukraine based streamer who, and I have actually a couple of clips and there are several other available who is streaming as early as today, as recently as today. And, and, uh, she's, and they're getting, while well, they're getting fucking hit. So here is, here's a clip. I mean, just, just so you could see, I want you to see like how real this is. This is another streamer doing the same shit that I am in her house or apartment or condo or whatever the fuck in the Ukraine. And while I deal with fucking a lawnmower noise, she's got fucking bombs blowing up around here. All right. So here we go. Take a look at this. Сейчас вводит к санкции санкции отказывается полностью подожди далеко недалеко я все равно продолжу не просто так сейчас все восстали не просто так все американские звезды, селебрити, да без разницы, у которых есть какая-то аудитория, пытаются донести вам, что происходит. It is another one here too. Не про... No, no, it's cut off. It's okay. <clears throat> so, I don't know what she's saying there. I have no idea. But, but I know what those sounds are. <laughs> and I know that she's in the middle of this. And in, her, in their face, you could see that this is a this is very real it's terrifying you hear boom and you're like and you freeze you're like do i move is it too late to move do i just do I where do i go right like it's what do you even fucking do right i mean you you check out complete when shit like when shit happens like this i'd imagine you just like check out completely that you're streaming you're just like survival mode instantly like what the fuck do you do you just freeze so there's a ton of clips from the from these two just specifically these two and other folks too but these are the ones that I had really available. But um, carrying on living, carrying on living. I know, and that's the crazy thing. It's like with as much stuff that's happening over there, there are people that are just carrying on living because, like, what do you do? You know, what? Well, how do you? People still have jobs. There's schools people still go to. I'm sure they probably close a lot of them down. But yeah, exactly. Like Crime said, you never know where the next shell is going to go. So. <clears throat> So when the invasion started, immediately we had game companies stepping up and saying, you know what, we don't support this. We support the Ukraine. 
and you know we're gonna make a donation of x whatever um and as a result some of their games got bombarded with uh negative reviews um one of them is one of our own beloved games here in the community uh space engineers space engineers got hit with a bunch of um of negative reviews i went to the page i mean you can't i read some of them but they hadn't but just to start with this you know mark mark uh merrick rosa he sent out an email and he said you know that they you know we decided to provide targeted help to selected people and provide additional and additional support we are where we we're able um for ukraine <clears throat> and so you know they they have the, uh, the 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 red cross uh links and everything and of course you know they end up getting fucking bombarded with uh with negative uh reviews uh, this also happened to uh the creators of or specifically the game this war is mine um which is which is a game that uh from 11 bit studios um that is that is like how do i describe it it's like a survival game in a war zone kind of and it's it's a tragedy of a game like it's definitely a tragedy of a game um <clears throat> but yeah you can see there's tons of and i translated some of these oh wait hold on this is from previous i think i think it's from previous uh yeah there's some down here that are that are russian but um isn't it said as ukraine as well i i think so i can't remember i can't remember exactly uh, i skipped playing this game because it was just too real for me I was like, I can't do this. Um, depressing. Yeah, it's dark. Yeah, exactly. It's dark. <clears throat> not German history in quite a few games. Does not, it just doesn't exist. Civilization is a great example. Russian existence might get erased uh, if they don't stop. Um, so, yeah, the, the review bombing that's happening, it reminded me of when uh, Hong Kong was basically in the process of being assimilated by China. Um, and we saw some bombardments to Steam reviews that were negative, of course, uh, because they were supporting Hong Kong and they're written in Chinese and such. Uh, there are, <clears throat> you could say that they're bots, you could say they're bots, but I mean, you know, realistically, there are plenty of people in Russia who support, uh, Putin in what he's doing, whether it's because they don't understand or because they believe in his ideologies or whatever. Um, so I would say yeah, it's probably not even bots. It's probably just people who just think that it's okay to invade another country and bomb them relentlessly. Um, this is not set in Ukraine, but it's heavily influenced by the previous conflict there. The place is made up in the game, if I remember right. There you go. There you go. Uh, so this one as well, like it went through it and people are just saying, you know, keep politics out of games, which is so stupid. Like <laughs> it's a game about war. <laughs> war is in the title. Keep politics out of games. Get the fuck out of here, man. So, studios are making donations. We get donations um, from uh, obviously the war is mine. The Love Mint Studios they made a two hundred fifty or sorry five hundred and twenty uh, thousand um, uh, pound uh, donation. Uh, we can see here this was updated actually, so updated like recently. Um, Pokemon also donating 200,000 US dollars. Uh, other companies are also do donating. Warhammer Vermintide Two developer Fat Shark. Uh, they sent around 25,000 pounds to the Red Cross. Quantic Dream uh, said sent uh, 56,000. I mean, it's not about how much money they're sending, right? It's about, you know, if, if, if they come out in support of it, then that's great. If they don't say anything, then it's like, it's fine. I don't necessarily need every game company in the world. I don't need DiGiorno's fucking pizza to like give us their stance on where they, on where they, where they are with like the Russia-Ukraine conflict, right? <clears throat> so... So they, you know, we've gotten plenty of, of studios that have come up and said, you know, we're going to support however we can financially or with fundraisers or charities or whatever um, in order to help support Ukraine in their defense of Russia. Um, all on the first day of the invasion happened to be uh, uh, a tournament. I think it was a CS tournament and simple uh, Sasha, Sophie, I think Sophie's is his real name. Uh, he made a statement. I don't have a lot of words to say. But now this is this is I, I believe after they won. I didn't watch this event, but I believe this is after they won. Um, Navi and yo, know, this is this is all fresh. He his hometown is Kiev right now, which is the capital of Ukraine, the target, the political target of uh, of Russia, and so he had a statement to make as well. First of all, I don't have a lot of words to say, but I want you to know that uh, esport is out of politics 
and all our players, all players from different teams, and all of you have nothing to do with government decisions. My whole career... My whole career I played with Ukrainian players, I played with Russian players, and I played with American players. And all of them great guys. And right now I stay with my friends, with my real friends. We win together and we lose together. And all of us want peace for Ukraine and for the whole world. All of us scared. And <clears throat> and all of us So it cuts off right here. Um but I mean I think his statement pretty much stands for itself, right? I, this is he says everybody's scared and it's true everyone's scared and you know as you know Punk's Tony Phil said fucking name. Uh Punk Tony Phil said it's like you know Russia's on a team. Yeah. I mean there's there's no I mean for them and for a lot of Ukrainians like and Russians like Ukraine is they have family, they have friends there. It's not this is not like this is not like uh uh, uh you know the United States and Greenland. You know like this is this is like California and Nevada, right? Like, this, this is like a this is a group of people who who are who share a lot of times the same language, same culture, uh, and <clears throat> you know obviously there's there's Ukraine has its own uh, uh, siloed culture and all that, but I mean you think about the origins of Ukraine with the Soviet Union back in the early '90s or sorry late '80s and pre previously, uh, yeah it's uh, yes yeah, it's Ukrainian. Sorry, that's the best thing I think of. Uh, this is really happy seeing how as how Hong Kong was a huge issue. Yeah, I mean, but Hong Kong still happened, right? And it was kind of like one of those things where it's like we all made a big stink out of it, and a lot of studios and a lot of uh, companies were like, we don't stand for this or whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, and then it still ended up happening, and so. Uh, but <clears throat> we also got a message here. I thought this was pretty uh, crazy. We got a message from Jamie Heineman of of Mythbusters. Yeah, Jamie Heineman. Nogi svas vidili minja po televizoru. Minja nužna štota skazats. Ruski vajeni korabu idina hui. Russian soldiers, you know what? You should just go home. Just go home. You know what you're doing is wrong. Ukrainians, Malatsi. Jamie Heineman hasn't done anything on TV in like eight years, six years, something like that. Like some insane number of, of years. Like he's he's not a TV guy anymore. Um <clears throat> yeah, he's a real quiet dude. He's usually keeps to himself. Um to see him get out and make a comment, I mean, it's just, it's people are, are everyone's trying to come out and show their support. Um, Adam will tell you, Adam talks about how he's really stepped back. Exactly. Uh, this is not Russia versus Ukraine. It's Putin versus the people who had the audacity to remove the puppet he put there. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's so that, anyway, so, um, <clears throat> We did have some instances. We had uh, World of Tanks. Uh, is this somebody's version again? Also, World of Tanks seem to be looking into it. What is this one? Uh, chats disabled in World of Tanks. Oh, wow. Okay. That's something to note. But here we have a World of Tanks studio. They fired the creative director because he made some comments. He, he didn't say... He didn't say anything like death to Ukraine or anything, but he did say that he supports the invasion. Uh, and he kind of kept it fairly simple. He's like, he supports Putin in his invasion of Ukraine or special military operation or whatever they want to call it. Uh, and then he got canned. <laughs> Wargaming was saying, Wargaming said, that doesn't, that conflicts with our views. It's not somebody we want to have on board and they let him go. Uh, all the celebs got to do is just sing Imagine over Zoom. Fuck. I know. It's fucking weird. I have no interest in all, on the opinions of, of celebrity, celebrities. Well, I brought up the Jamie Heineman one because that one was pretty special. He's like his his influence on a lot of uh, of of just I mean just I mean it was a show that we watched growing up. Really, I mean, granted, I was a little older watching it. Some of you guys, but still, I watched the fuck out of MythBusters, and then he disappeared. And so, <clears throat> to me, that's significant. You know, also tweeted by our or not our, but uh, by the official Ukraine uh, Twitter. So they see they see the impact that it has. They recognize that. Um, well, the social media guy does or whatever, but still. 
I think he's referring to you. Oh, oh, you're referring to you. Oh, yeah, not, uh, yeah, no, I get that. That Walrus was inspirational. Exactly. So, uh, we got, we got a, we being like US based companies, uh, this is the Ministry of Digital Transformation. And this is the, or Minister, the Ministry of. So, this is the Minister of Digital Transformation from the Ministry of Digital Transformation in the Ukraine. And they said, is that to all game development companies and esports platforms, the Russian Federation has carried out a deceptive and outrageous military attack on my country. And then he goes on to say, I'm sure you will not only hear, but also do everything possible to protect Ukraine, Europe, and family and the entire democratic. Um, oh, hold on a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped. Uh, <laughs> so he says, uh, but we need your support in 2022. Modern technology is perhaps the best answer to tanks, multiple rocket launchers, HRAD, and this. Um, and then, <clears throat> yeah, there he goes. He says, appeal to temporary block all Russian and Belarusian accounts. Uh, temporarily stop the uh, participation of Russian and Belarusian teams and gamers in all international esports events and cancel all international events holding in the territory of Russia and Belarus. So, um, this is, this, this is one of many things. It seems probably weird. It's like, why are you going after gamers dog? Right? It's like, they're appealing to every, every industry, every industry they've appealed to sports, uh, uh, uh finance, uh, gaming, like they're appealing to travel, right? They're trying to appeal to everybody because every sanction every company that pulls out uh, uh of uh like sales or, or deals or transfers or exports or whatever to russia further destabilizes the ruble and the more that the ruble is destabilized the less that it's worth uh and you know the hope is of course that one day maybe a brave russian will go and, and try to take care of this on our behalf kind of like how our u.s senator uh uh uh, uh lindsey graham said last night on twitter Someone should just kill Putin. Ha! It's, just, it's so easy. Really high on the list of things you don't say out loud as a U.S. senator. <clears throat> so what is this one? Hold on a second. Uh, uh, pretty sure every other superpower has invaded another country in the last decade. Why wasn't the same done for uh, Saudi, uh, says a Saudi bombing in Yemen? Saudi, I figure you say that. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of discussion about that. Um, and... From my perspective, it seems that this is the first time that we've had a war that is relatable to democratic countries and, and, and this is the biggest part, I think, we have so much information. We have so much information thanks to social media. We have videos, we have pictures, we have live streams, we have all this shit. We have everything accessible. Now everyone is informed. <clears throat> this is a very televised and TikTok tweet, tweeted war. Exactly. This is, there's content everywhere related to this. So we are now extraordinarily informed, more so than, you know, whether it's, whether it's, uh, I think there were like, was it Libya or something? Like there's recent stuff that happened. But this is a this is a combination. It's like years ago we didn't have the social outreach where we had a refined trend system to get uh, this kind of content and these headlines out to people and get people informed. We didn't really have all of that. Um, <clears throat> further, again, it's the relation of right. Like I know that atrocities happen in some you know, uh, Middle Eastern countries, in some African countries, in other countries. Uh, I know these atrocities happen, but it's not something that's on my, as a United States some, you know, resident, it's not something that's always on my radar. Russia has been a very, very long time adversary of the United States, okay? Some people are old enough to remember what it was like living under threat that we could possibly be nuked randomly. Okay, so when Russia does something, then we pay it. We as, as Americans tend to pay attention a little bit more because of our previous dealings with uh, with Russia. So this is a much more relatable for Westerners than it than if there's you know a conflict occurring in an African country or a, a, a South Asian country or a Middle Eastern country, right? So so just so you know, it's not that we're deceptively trying to maybe media maybe mass media is is your enemy here but in terms of the average person we just weren't fed that info it's just not something that is on our plate i'm sure people in those countries 
are raising a stink. At least I'd hope so. The same way that we raise a stink whenever there's issues regarding police brutality, for example, or I don't know, an insurrection on our capital, right? But there are things that happen within our country that are outrageous. And I don't go to other countries and say, hey, man, how come you're not mad about this? You know, because it's not their fucking problem, right? It's tough. It's tough, right? There's shit happening all over the world. But this one is the most televised and the most relatable for Westerners, I think. So that's my take on why. It's weird because Russia and America have never really been at war. I uh, disagree with you 100%. <laughs> what <else? laughs> Cold war. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move on. So, um, so isolation has begun, right? Isolation has begun. Uh, it starts with, uh, it starts, when I say starts with, but some of the biggest ones is, can you, can you just get rid of this guy? Like, dude, just shut up. Like, I'm not trying to censor you, but like, you're just going to argue shit. So just go away. Um, <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Reddit bans links to Russian state media across the entire site. Um, and you can see here that they just all all Russia based links. They basically shut off. Uh, we have uh, CDPR. Uh, CDPR, we have uh, they also say that they're not going to be selling uh, their their anything in Russia. They should just sell them like the unpatched version of Cyberpunk 2077. But, you know, um, <laughs> Uh oh yeah, Valve. I know that Valve hasn't made any. This is a very ugly site. Let me fix that. I know that Valve hasn't made any statements specifically targeting Russia, as far as I've seen. But they have taken actions behind the scenes where they no longer take uh, payments from Russia. So that's a big deal. I mean, if you if you know. Russia and some of Valve's games, you know, this is kind of a big deal. Um, fuck, what else? I mean, uh, there's, I mean, there's a bunch here. I think, yeah, this is kind of CD Projekt Red, Amanita, State of Play, uh, Cretivo. Uh, I mean, lots of financial aid, lots of people just trying to spread the word, spread the message. Uh, it's no wonder that, like, as of today, Facebook and Twitter end up being banned in Russia because this information is everywhere and they don't want people to know they don't want their people to know what they're doing um just saying there's barely anything you can buy or do financially in russia without after all the sanctions and i'm surprised people can review bomb on steam um, nintendo eShop payment was suspended in russia thank you furious thank you you got a total war game in russian currency once it was so cheap <laughs> well it's gonna be even cheaper now <laughs> it's gonna be even cheaper now it's fucking ruble. The ruble, let me see. The ruble, well, the ruble hasn't dropped uh, very much since it dropped the first time. Um, but just so you know, like Dogecoin is worth 12 cents uh, to the dollar, US dollar. And one ruble is one cent to the dollar. Should you buy the dip? <laughs> I know, I was thinking the same thing. Can you buy the dip? <laughs> so what's the end game here? The world shuts off Russia from the world and then they drop a nuke for attention. <clears throat> I don't think... I don't, I mean, I don't, what do I know, right? But I don't think they're going to drop a nuke for attention because that will only be make things worse for them. Like, that would only make things worse for them, I feel like. Um, here we go. Let's keep going here. This is a... Um, it's, 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 oh, yeah, this is this is basically just a list. Yeah, here we go. This is what I want to show you guys. Here, Here is a graphic where you could see that there are a massive amount of companies that are boycotting sales in uh yeah it's true it was i mean, it wasn't the was, was stable uh, currency before but i think it dropped by like 90 percent or something um yes and you may see a few familiar faces on there if i can just ooh, ooh, woo. okay i lost it. i don't know where it's at where is that there it is poor hot baby <laughs> I haven't heard about Porter being blocked out there, but it's on this list, so I gotta take it for what it is. But yeah, Volkswagen, Snapchat, Microsoft, Ford. I mean, basically every car manufacturer is not gonna sell out there. Um, they drive GMCs, by the way. Like I noticed that when I was going through some of their uh their I mean they have other vehicles that they make too, but I noticed that one of their listed military uh vehicles, light vehicles, was actually a GMC, and I was like, that's pretty funny. Uh <laughs> GM sells all over the world. Oh yeah, for sure. So uh 
You can't block, block, block a man's fucking porn. Exactly. So this is a lot. Like, I mean, when you, when you layer this many, um, restrictions on a company, it's no longer about just a simple tariff, import tax, export tax, uh, or any kind of other, oh, we're going to stop this pipeline or whatever. Like those are all like major sanctions that governments can do. Right. This is like capitalism basically stepping up and saying, well, you know what? This is a pretty good PR right now. So we're going to join this list. They don't care about the conflict or any of that shit. And some of them might maybe a little bit, but come on, <laughs> that's not how it works. So like, they're, they're jumping on board. And so this, this, I think like this is going to have as significant an effect on, uh, on Russia as some of the other changes that are, that are going through, like, you know, the big tariffs and exports, uh, taxes and all that shit. So this is the like, huge. This is pretty huge. I mean, only fans on the fucking list. I just noticed it's fucking everybody. Um, but yeah, once you starve, once you starve a, a country out of resources or money or imports or products or services, like they start to pay attention. Um, I've, I've seen, I know that there are civilians that are being impacted by this. They have nothing to do with it. And that sucks like that. That sucks at this point. He's not listening, right? Like Putin's not fucking listening. And so we need to find somebody else that can listen or that will listen. And so all we can really hope for is that somebody internally protests hard enough to fix the problem. Uh, Elon jumped on. Is it a good thing that he did? Yes. Did he do it to help or to make stocks rise? We all know the answer. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Elon, he, he did, he did a good thing for a capitalist. He did, a, <laughs> he did a, he did an honorable thing, uh, by sending out Starlink, uh, uh, receivers or transmitters or whatever. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so it's, 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 it's a good thing. And they got it and hopefully it actually helps them. Uh, <clears throat> so this is, I mean, this is an ongoing story. It does have an impact on every industry. I mean, look at this list. There's the finance, there's the motor industry, there's entertainment industry, there's the shipping industry, there's software industry, there's uh, Amazon is on this list. I don't know what Amazon did, but I'm probably has, doesn't get used as much as Alibaba or something out there. Um, the, the best capitalists can do, expand infrastructure and make, it, make new customers. Yeah. Uh, Elon now says having a Starlink receiver in UA might make you an artillery target. So that's something. So, um, satellite, satellite based communication systems put out a cone, right? And you can have like narrow beam or narrow field or narrow beam, um, transmitters and receivers to try to narrow that a little bit. So that way you don't necessarily give away your position. I don't know what Starlink's. I don't know what Starlink's system is in terms of like how narrow their field is when it locks onto satellites for transmission. Um, but I mean, if it's narrow enough, it's one of those things it's like an odds thing. You don't necessarily have it on all the time. You would just click it on, send it and then turn it off. Basically. It's not something you would run full time. Absolutely not. Um, but you know, a lot of, I mean, there's satellite systems. I mean, Russia has satellite systems right now in that 40 mile convoy or however long it is. Um, they have, uh, 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 satellite systems there that they brought over. They have like radio systems too, but those are useless outside of a handful of kilometers and their LOS systems are only going to be good up to the curvature of the earth. So <laughs> their satellite systems are probably using like troposphere satellite systems, which bounce off of the troposphere and then come down. That's one way to do it. Uh, but you know, that also could potentially give away your position. So that's it's communications uh, behind enemy lines is like really, 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 really stressful. Uh, communications was my field when I was in the service and we did plenty of training and everything where we were deployed uh, in training exercises and having to, you know, hide our signal and do all that shit. So there is, it's, it's, you see where all of your, all of your, uh, uh, your exposed areas are, it's like, I could turn this on and then someone just knows where you're at. Right. <laughs> just, just fucking knows. So yeah, you gotta be really careful with that shit. Point to point, uh, encryption, uh, line of sight, radio antennas, um, all kinds of shit uh, you know, narrow fields, you know, satellite systems, tax site, tax at radio, small little rate, small, tiny little, like they look like, uh, they don't look like anything. At, oh, here we go. Like, like this, like this little, <laughs> Boop, boop, boop. And then they just, and then 
that shoots to the satellite somehow. Focus. Uh, that shoots to the satellite somehow, and they call on a phone that's connected to this little satellite thing. It's crazy. Like some of the stuff that we had. We had 20 years ago. Uh, but judging by some of the equipment they have, it's still the same shit they had 20 years ago. So I'm probably up to date on that. Um, funny thing is how one could see the Russian invasion on Google Maps. Those alcoholics went to war with private phones on. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so that that's that's our UK or sorry, uh, Ukrainian uh, coverage for today. I hope that I don't have to talk about it in a negative light again in the future. Um, but as it stands right now, we're looking at, you know, game companies and all kinds of industries standing up and saying, we're not going to sell products there. We're not going to do business there. That's pretty much the end of it until this shit is over or whatever. Uh, and we just have to hope that it's enough. Like it's enough to choke them out and they're just like, okay, well, you know what? Maybe this isn't worth all the hassle of having a chunk of land. Maybe it's not worth it. But as we've seen with what uh, Putin has said, you know, as recently as yesterday, like everything's going according to plan. He doesn't have any, you know, he did say this morning, it was like, oh, hold on. Maybe we could ease up a little bit. I'm not doing anything mean. We should just go back to the way things were before. So it seemed like he's kind of backpedaling a little bit there, but we never know what, what somebody like that is thinking. Lots of people in the and the radiated forest today on Google Maps. Too many Android users in the Russian army. Wow. <laughs> Twenty year old equipment still in use. Sounds like Canadian Army. Yep. Putin is a prideful man. No, I, I see that. I see that. Absolutely. Um, which could be which could be dangerous. Pride. He's in one of the seven deadly sins. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> So moving on to other far less pressing issues, but things that we should probably bring up because like, what the fuck? Because like, what the fuck? Well, chili bear. So we had, uh, we had an instance of, of assholery, asshole, assholery recently with a company called Artesian Builds. Greed, lust, pride, envy, sloth, gluttony, wrath. Wow. I knew it was on there. I knew it was on there. I played Dante's Inferno back in the day. It's getting pretty good. Um, so, Artisan Built, founded in 2018, they had a giveaway. Oh, God, these guys. They had a giveaway. And, uh, you know, a typical giveaway that they would do on, on stream. You know, they just pick a random person that's that's there, and as long as you're a partner or whatever, uh, then you'll get uh, you'll get a PC. Whoa, a PC! Now this is huge. This is huge. A whole ass PC is fucking huge. No matter how big of a streamer you are, like a whole ass PC is amazing. And so somebody won it, and then this happens. Three days ago is within my threshold. Long streams, which is good. An artesian builds gift panel. Let's see if you have redeeming, redeeming qualities. Well, He's talking about the winner, in case that's not clear. She, she, she I, I, like I would be international. No, no idea who you're. Like, I, I obviously. I'm over here. No, no, not international. America. Whew, cheap shipping. No, it just means. They don't have to pay for shipping. Thank goodness. Lower mm. left corner, you can see that's the name <laughs> of the person that won. From Australia. Active nice. media. So Australians will potentially have to pay like duties, for example. I think it's worth it. So that's the first part. We'll Let me make it louder. All followers combined, still under 5k, even across multiple socials. I was trying to be generous. Mm, that's a tough one. Because there's bound to be repeats if you're doing multiple socials. I know. That's also true. Let's go into the analytics dash. Like, he's digging. He's digging for something to disqualify this person who won. And this, this, the final video, this here. These babies. Oh, and there's the re-roll. Here's the reason, chatter babies. Here's the reason. This person has three months 
of ambassadorship and not a single click. Ooh, not, not a single click. Not a single click. Not even once. It's a little rough. So it sounds He's purged. Trying. He That's purged. Really <laughs> this is an ambassador giveaway, and you've got to be. Any guy, yeah, anyone who who voluntarily wears the Star Lord jacket any other day than Halloween, <laughs> it's disgusting. Yeah, it's gross. You haven't sucked our dick long enough yet to win this PC. I didn't think it was this bad when I was reading the tweets, and then because I was like, "Oh, this person feels slighted because you know because they get they, they they disqualified it for some reason." But when you watch it, it's like this is fucked up. Like they he's actively looking for reasons to disqualify somebody purely purely because they're just not big enough. So let me see. Yeah, here we go. So the mods in the chat, the mods for Artesian builds are asking, uh, it says, well, what are the requirements to win? Because we only know about the panels, right? Let's see if I don't know if there's any audio uh, here. Again, my company, I make the rules. You've been a good ambassador. You know who you are. <laughs> yeah, they changed the rules of the contest afterwards. Is it fucked up? Is it enraging, right? You see that shit? <laughs> it's like, what are you fucking doing, man? You don't fucking do that. It's my company, my rules. What the fuck, dude? So, obviously, shit's on fire. You, you cagged him. I was like, you know who you are, yeah. Aren't giveaways supposed to be helpful for people? Like, aren't you supposed to be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give this PC to Ms. Kiff, right? Give it to somebody who needs... Don't give it to me. Give it to somebody who's like... Who, who does have zero... Right? Somebody who does have a low amount of followers. They're the ones who could benefit the most from this shit. So, they're in like damage control mode, right? They got some tweets coming out. And they say, hey, Twitter Sphere, I'm sorry. Sorry for the way we did parts of the giveaway today. We've given a lot of people a lot of awesome free tech, and that's not going to stop. If you want to talk, I'm here. That's the kind of point of being live so much. I'm always here for you. <laughs> Uh, everyone in the affiliate ambassador program is eligible to get awesome free stuff and earn money from referrals. It costs nothing to join. You can always go and chat with me live on Twitch. I've talked for a long time about being transparent about everything. It's live after all. There's no filter. There's no PR team. There's just us. You can get a cake or a new SSD. And remember, we give back 100% of what we earn on Twitch to upgrade builds and do giveaways. No other company is doing it this way, and it's not the easy way. And he says further down somewhere. Oh, is it gone? It's buried. Oh, good. It's buried. Oh, here we go. The easy way uh, is to not be there for you. But I've been there for years. I haven't done much of anything else. I love interacting with you all. And I feel terrible that anyone that didn't enjoy the process today. Uh, please, please feel free to share ideas on how to improve. <laughs> L plus ratio plus maiden list. This apology is going to be a no for me, dog. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, the ratios are pretty tough on these things. That tweet got buried. That's hilarious. Uh, he needs a manager with a silly guy. He needs a PR guy. There's a reason PR teams exist to serve as a filter between public and leadership or devs. Yeah, yeah. Those finger guns. I know. I know, Akadni. <laughs> that was the first response. There was no sorry there. Yeah, yeah. A, a sorry without saying sorry. There was no sorry there at all. Exactly. We apologize. Did we say it? Did we, did we, apo we apologize, right? That was an apology, right? Shikiyoku. Shh. 60 months. Have a great way. Hey, you too, man. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> second response. This one. <laughs> this one is typed. This one's typed out on actual letterhead um, and posted. I didn't read it because it's bullshit, right? <laughs> but. No, I read it. It's bullshit. <laughs> to all my ambassadors, thank you for your ongoing support. This brand will not be here without you for all these years. I truly apologize that I hurt you as caused yours. Blah, 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 blah. Basically, there's still no apology here. They just talk about themselves. It says here, it says, we take great pride in giving 100% of every day to provide a friendly and fun service to all viewers and customers. And this is, I have failed not only our customers, uh, our viewers, customers, and ambassador, but also my team and values of our brand. So it says, I will commit my full attention to create a new guideline that will reflect on, uh, on artesian builds, values, to fully support. No, there's no real apology here. There's no real apology. I have people skill that deal with customers so the CEO doesn't have to. Yeah, for the president of the world, aka Artesian Belts. Bullshit straight from the company's lead asshole. <laughs> so the third response. 
It's a video. Last night on our platform on Twitch, a platform that many amazing creators helped me to create in no small part. I glossed over a few amazing creators in a PC giveaway, and I absolutely should not have done that. And I did it in a sh stupid way. A really stupid way. I'm extremely sorry about that. Kia, Strawberry, Protese, and any others who are hurt by this. I would not intend that for you, ever. So, so sorry. That's not how anyone should be treated. We have a platform capable of building people. No, he's trying to look like Ashton Kutcher. We're going to use that platform going forward to do an even better job of building people up, never tearing them down. Okay, now listen. It will listen. not happen again. So going forward, any ambassador is eligible to win the PCs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just in case you missed it. Hold on. Let me play it again. A better job of building people up, never tearing them down. It will not happen again. So going forward, any ambassador <sighs> is eligible to win the PCs. Any ambassador at all? <laughs> Am I muted? No, you're good. <laughs> um. Oh, you good now? Oh, weird, weird. That's weird. Oh, I, I think. Oh, you know why? Because I breathed in this thing. <laughs> the diaphragm locks up sometimes. Oh, it's old. The diaphragm locked up because I was breathing out too hard. Anyways, it's cool. Um. <laughs> I don't know what I said. All I said was just bullshit. Okay, <laughs> that's all you gotta know. <laughs> Uh, we know IRL news. Oh, we're good there. Oh, yeah, we know the IRL news. Hi, we're good. We're good. We're moving on. This is other bullshit now. Um, anyways, anyway, so they did offer, and like like Corey says, like Donna Sawana says, they did offer to go ahead and give her give her a um uh, uh, uh to give her a build, and <clears throat> you know, she said go fuck yourself. Um, also offering to step in Intel. <laughs> Intel offered to step in. Thank you to the community for reaching out to us. Intel Gaming values inclusivity for all content creators. We aim to support the gaming community as a whole. We will continue to make partnership decisions based on what allows us to reach all communities through our products. We strive towards welcoming streamers of all sizes of our programs. Do not agree with the recent negative comments directed towards small streamers. We're reaching out to uh, relevant parties to address the situation the Intel Gaming team. Good for her. Yeah, Jay-Z Two Cents. Jay-Z Two Cents, he has a video uh, where he goes over this whole thing. He talks about it, and uh, I think he actually goes through the process of actually they're going to make her a PC uh, or something. So he stepped in the best way you know how. Yeah, look at that. Gotta get the slow motion 3080 Ti installed. Oh, did I say Jay-Z? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Jay's two cents. Not Jay Z's two cents. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, 3080 Ti. Yeah. You need to clean your PC. Yeah. So good on this guy. Good on Jay Z for stepping in. Uh, a lot of people obviously making a ruckus about this because we don't need we don't need people like this, companies like this in this industry. Um, <clears throat> OTK. Made a statement. They were partners. OTK is a, a coalition of very popular streamers, including like uh, uh, Asmund Gold, Ms. Kiff, and a bunch of others. I'm sure some of you guys know some. Uh, but they said, uh, we appreciate those in our community who contacted us yesterday and informed us what happened as of today. We have parted ways with Artesian Builds. OTK is, was, and always will be a collective of streamers working together to elevate one another and produce content that is greater than the sum of its parts. So this is a huge loss for them because this is... Yo, this is Asmund Gold and Ms. Kiff. He's like the two biggest streamers on Twitch. So it's like, this is a massive deal that they lost here. Uh, and we also have uh, uh, Pestily, which some of you guys might know. Also, parting ways with them. Uh, we have, um, oh, fuck. Uh, Nick Marks, thank you. And Same thing. Keep on keeping on. So my point is, is that, listen, my, my team and I are evaluating everything. You know, we don't like the clips. We watch the past broadcast. We don't like the way... You know, that, that they're doing the things that they're doing at all. I mean, you guys know we do a lot of giveaways in here. I mean, I joke with you guys, but never have we rolled on somebody and then taken it away. Like, like the way, there's this very odd, very odd way of doing things. And I don't, I don't love that. So, 
But at the same time, I want to encourage you guys to just be careful with cancel culture, okay? Hold people. That's the part. That <laughs> I should have watched the rest because I'm curious where he was going with that. <laughs> I go, oh, okay, okay, fine. Let's see what he says. <laughs> see, it's here. We might as well see. I'm curious what he says about that part. That's the part that I hate, and we keep on keeping on. So my point is, is that, listen, my, my team and I are evaluating everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. we don't like the mm -hmm. clips. We watch the past broadcasts. We don't like the way yeah, 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 yeah. We saw know, this that, part. That they're doing Can the we? things that they're doing yeah. at all. I mean, you guys know we do a lot of giveaways in here. I mean, I joke with you guys, but never have we rolled on somebody and then taken it away. Like, like the way – there's this very odd, very odd way of doing things, and I don't, I don't love that, so – but at the same time, I want to encourage you guys to just be careful with cancel culture, okay? Hold people accountable, but don't bury them, you know? Hold people accountable. I, I do I do, I do, do agree with that, but don't bury these motherfuckers, man. Because if the gun's pointed at you, it's always a different fucking, a different POV. You know what I mean? And I think it's okay if we just let this guy go. <laughs> I get it. I get. I understand the cancel culture thing. I'm not. I'm not for it and all that stuff. But when people do like deliberately shitty things like that, like that, come on. Oh, and there's the re-roll. Woo, boy! When I said a PC in this bitch, nope. Ha! Nah, man. We could probably just let them go. We could probably just not work with those people anymore. Uh, bury them where they don't learn. Yeah, this dude doesn't need to be in position of power ever. Uh, <laughs> when I bought this new shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't do pitch for, pitchforks around here anymore, do we? <laughs> All the way PCs they build, and they have lots of problems. Yeah, I've heard that they have some problems, but I don't know if that's like percentage-wise. Like, does every game company put out PCs that are uh, that have a percentage of issues? Uh, F's in the chat. <laughs> F's in the chat for this girl. She's got less than five thousand followers, man. I heard that number. I was like, it's you know, it's hard to build up five thousand followers. Like, this is not a joke, man. Come on. <laughs> This guy specifically bury him. Cancel culture is general is case by case. Exactly. It's case by case. I had I had to see what Nick Burks was saying for the rest of that. But uh he's got some nice biceps though. The guy's built like an actual Chad, huh? It's fucking hell. Anyways, uh, so moving on. Speaking of Chads, did you guys know? This is gonna feel like an ad, but it's only because I put the article in the wrong spot. But we're gonna talk about it anyways. There is a Best of Boomer shooter, Shooters Humble Bundle that's live right now. Just want to put that out there because it's got some pretty good Boomer Shooters. I know some of you guys like them. I know some of you Boomers liking them. So, oh, fuck. There you go. HumbleBundle.com. You can get uh, Ion Fury, Dusk, uh, Dread Templar, uh, Project Warlock, Proteus. Uh, I, I think, actually, I think Dusk, uh, Proteus, and Project Warlock, maybe Project Warlock, or maybe, he's, and another one is actually composed by the same guy. I can't remember his name, um, but anyways, yeah, this this these are some good games. I played Iron Fury, it's good. I played Dread Templar, it's good. I played Project Warlock, it's pretty good. And Proteus, I highly recommend. If anything, thank you, uh, Andrew Holschalt did Proteus and Dun Dusk. Thank you. Yeah, and his shit is his music is fantastic. The soundtracks on Proteus and on Dusk are amazing. I haven't played Dusk, but I've listened to the soundtrack because it's so good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. He did the Doom Eternal uh, DLC. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, he's good. He's good at that shit. Um, and the Rise of the Triad reboot. He's got a lot. He's got a lot of games under his belt. He's got a lot. So yeah, I didn't mean to put that there. If I, if I had if I had a URL, you know, reference code or referral referral code, that throw it in. But. Uh, but, you know, boomer shooters are there for you guys if you need them. Uh, there's one here I want to check out. Who's this one? What is this? Who's this thick, thickubus? Let me see. Head on. Blood right. Trailer, but head on. Head on. It's okay. Okay. 20 hours gameplay. Okay. 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 I'm check that out later. Like me some th thickubus, boy. Original Rise Trash. So good. So good. So moving on. For the lazy boomers in chat. Thank you, Cogni. Appreciate you. So, Twitch. Nothing too big. Nothing too big. Just um, Bloomberg reported that there are some employees. It's probably Schreier. It's probably Schreier who's doing the reporting. Um, <clears throat> bleeding. What Twitch you now? Bleeding. <laughs> so there are reports internally that uh, some of the executive level or some of the leadership does not really appreciate where some of the lower level staff want to steer things. 
Um, and so he's <laughs> 12, 12, 10 to 12 higher up or some, yeah. Uh, so discussions have taken place where some of the mid to low level personnel or employees would bring up, you know, they, they changes that they think will be effective for the community because Twitch is such a large ecosystem and um, not a particularly delicate one, but a, but a very flammable one, though. <laughs> like, like we set this bitch on fire all the time and somehow it's still standing. Um, <clears throat> but some of the executives don't really agree with a lot of what mid and low level um, uh, employees want to see happen with the platform. Now, uh, we've had issues with what we feel are low level employees who are maybe steering the company into the wrong direction with some of the things that have happened in the past. Uh, we had huge issues when they try to come up with that weird like panel or whatever that they didn't do anything with. Um, and so it was, it was, it's, it's, it seems apparent that like there's just conflict between what, in terms of like what they want to do, uh, internally with the company. Um, <clears throat> Marcus Graham, uh, that's DJ Wheat, uh, had criticized, this is right here, criticized Twitch hiring process, but he said, focus on Silicon Valley candidate, candidates who have little, no knowledge, right? That's, that's Marcus Graham, yeah. Uh, who have little knowledge of the games industry and live streaming, which is, which makes perfect sense. Twitch is located here in the Bay Area, in San Francisco to be exact. Um, they're probably hiring, you know, tech bros and, and, and sisses or whatever tech people, um, <clears throat> who work in other general tech industries, apt backend, whatever, and then bringing them in to run a company like Twitch, which is very unique. And I feel like should bring in people that are culture based, right? It should be looking to hire streamers, uh, or people who are at least familiar with the system, maybe poach somebody from YouTube or something like that. Um, see, uh, the, the panel was a bad idea that could have uh, could have been good, but absolutely destroyed one by one PR horny streamer, <laughs> a PR horny streamer uh, streamers that have retired. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of options here. I mean, when I so when I started working for Zam full time, me being a content creator, like I went into a was a director of uh, director of uh, of content for Zam that came off of my experience of doing content, period. Right. So I, I was I was a natural hire for that because I had good experience, relevant experience. And what like Wheat's saying here and other people are saying is that they don't they're not getting people that are part of the culture. They, they're getting in people who are disconnected from it because they just see like the like the, the people you would see on Silicon Valley, for example, this series. Like those are the kind of people they're bringing, not necessarily gaming focus or at all. They're just getting in to work on, you know, to 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 work on general best practices that they've seen work at other startups. Um, so this is this is just a small, I just want a small hit here. I just want to kind of bring to light this because I thought this was a pretty interesting story. We've already seen Emmett Shear all but completely disappear from the from the from the timeline. Uh, from uh, well, from the timeline, really. Like he's still active on Twitter. He doesn't have listed that he's the president of of uh, Twitch or anything. He doesn't have outside of Twitch.tv has nothing really about Twitch. Um, and my feelings is that Emmett Shear has been basically just set aside so that he doesn't, you know, cause any more problems or whatever. Uh, and we had talked about this before. Oh, yeah, yeah. When we're applying the community guidelines, that we guy. very specifically take context and intent into account. I can't like stop it. Once once you go, you can't stop. Uh, that guy. And when this happened, when this happened, we were talking about how man, this guy, we just get him out of here. Like we need somebody else, whatever. But it could be like the evil, you know, right? And I mentioned this before. It's like if he leaves, who do we get? In the, who do we get to replace him? And if we're seeing stories like this start to trickle out, that there is disagreements with higher ups that should be people like Emmett Shear. Uh, and the people who are, you know, actually working and in being involved with the culture and the company and the people, then that's, then this could be the disconnect that we're seeing, or this could be a very real disconnect that could eventually evolve into something bigger, whether it's continual, continual, like deterioration of like the quality of service or something that Twitch offers, um, or whatever. So that was funny. There was a recent article posted on how people like DJ, we feel like Emmett just doesn't get it. 
but but is Emmett doing anything or is he just laying low on social? Like to me, like I feel like he's he hasn't done anything. We'll see this year. TwitchCon's coming up again in October. I think it's end of the year that we're getting TwitchCon, both here in the States and overseas. So um uh, Sarah Clemens, right? That's just right here, actually. Uh yeah, Sarah Clemens and Michael Aragon both left the company. <clears throat> just TV is coming back. So so I uh, yeah, Boots, I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. Because I almost feel like Twitch needs to uh, figure out how to separate his company into verticals without necessarily partitioning the company altogether. We need features that support a certain type of creator. Not specifically one. I don't have an example of that, right? But different types of creators have different needs. Like, I don't have any examples, but... <laughs> There are features that instead of being, well, what's something we could build that'll work for everyone? And then it comes out and it's kind of like, it's just kind of like a mediocre feature because it's designed for everyone. We need something a little bit more tailored to some of the individual uh, verticals that we have, whether it's just chatting, whether it's, uh, and not just tags or filtering. It has to do shit that is, um, F that uh, that is uh, 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 sorry you say F and I freak out <laughs> uh, uh, that that is tailored to the individual creators artists uh, uh, people from games you know, whatever there's ways to support these people specifically directly without watering down a feature so that it works for everybody but <clears throat> what do I know I was just I was just director of content at a, at a ten cent you know what do I know. <laughs> That they said that Emmett had to be constantly explained things in a quantitative, uh, quantitative fashion. But if Emmett does step out of the way, do something? Do we get something worse in this place? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's the gamble. We might actually we might just get something, someone worse. <laughs> just fucking worse. So moving on, we have a. Oh, let me move, let me move the story down a little bit here because I want to cover this towards the end here. Uh, so the Steam Deck's coming out. Have any of you guys got a Steam Deck yet? Does anybody, does anybody have a Steam Deck yet? Thank you, Jordan. By the way. Anybody, anybody, anybody? I don't think so. You wish. Yeah. Waiting for yours, waiting for yours. Well, if you're lucky, if you're lucky. So what do these people know? So I emailed them. Hey, we are reaching out to a few folks that we have listed as Steam Deck reservation holders in the first batch who happen to live near Valve. Since we'll need someone home to sign for it, we're reaching out to see if it works. And if so, please confirm address for delivery. One guy said, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully people won't get mad that I'm signing them. I think it's going to be weird. Like, if I were at home and I was getting a delivery from Amazon and people with cameras get out of a truck, they're going to be like, <laughs> I've got your Steam Deck. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to play the first one here so you can see it. Hi. Oh, my God. Are you Hello. Are you Hayden? Yes. Hi, Hayden. I'm Gabe. Oh my God. Hello. So we got some of the decks early. And so we decided this is a big milestone for us to finally have these in hand and be able to give them to people. So I'm super excited to give you your deck. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. Anyway, so. <laughs> Uh, okay, boy. It's so weird seeing came out in the real world. I know. <laughs> I'd hug him. I couldn't help it. I, I love the awkwardness. Like, even Gabe was like, so this is kind of a big milestone for us. And this guy's just standing there just like, <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if one guy just took the Steam Deck and slammed the door? Yeah. <clears throat> well, thank you. Can I just sign here or something like that? Do you vitamin? Do you bow? Yeah, exactly. That's what Wolfie said. Is, I would bow. I don't know what I would do if I saw Gabe, but I mean, a lot. I mean, people recognize him. He's a, rec a very recognizable character. Um, uh, they actually, I think they're stationed right over here. Like their their headquarters is like like right here in my, like not in my city specifically, but really fucking close. Anyways, they put out a video uh, where he goes out, he delivers to some folks, and it's pretty amusing. One of them kind of did that. She's like, "Okay, why cameras? Bye." <laughs> Or is a Half-Life 3 episode he passed me 15 years ago? Yeah, ask him about that. Ask him about that. So, uh, so Steam Decks are slowly going out. Uh, oh, they have, I think they have a show. They, they do have a building here. It's not the headquarters, I don't think. But they have, they have something out here, though. Um, because they were shipping Steam Links out, and they were, they were, their address was, like, right down the street. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so they have some kind of building here. Um, <clears throat> so, I. Uh, 
it came out and all, already because it has thumbsticks, right? So already we start getting videos and, and things being uh, uh, shared information showing that there is a little bit of drift. Now, it's already been resolved, but I want to show you guys this video because you can see on here how significant of a drift it is, right? Again, it's been resolved, but this would freak me out. Okay, this is there. This is this is the you know, this software just basically shows like, you know, the inputs and everything, the XY values. So right here, right joystick, you can see that negative 32,767. I, I don't know if what the exact number is, but I'm guessing it probably goes up to like 65,656 or whatever the, the binary number is uh, for that uh, in that range. Uh, so this would be basically like half the distance <laughs> in that one direction is uh, it's it's leaning. Uh, and so you can see as it moves around, it gets stuck. Um, at about, yeah, but it's around 5,000. That's right. Sorry, not 32,000, uh, but it's like around 5,000 or so. So uh, a couple of videos are coming out showing this, and people are like, oh, shit, here we go. It's a switch all over again. Uh, we had videos. It's the same video here. Sorry. Whoops. Oh, 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 messing up here. Uh, we did get a response from somebody uh, there. This is Lawrence Yang. He is the... Uh, design at Valve Software, currently shipping Steam Deck. That's right. Um, and so he says, hi, I'll quick note about Steam Deck thumbsticks. The team has looked into the reported issues and it turns out it was a dead zone regression from recent firmware update. We just shipped a fix to address the bug. So make sure you're up to date. So that's pretty dope. Uh, uh, 32767 is the maximum value for the integer of that size. Okay, so that's probably the maximum. And then the the, the drift was like five or 6,000, which is a significant part portion of that. Uh, this is all six wheel drift without factory calibration. Yeah. So this is, <clears throat> thankfully this was squashed like right away, but it also led me to this video that I thought I was watching like another random YouTuber. Steam deck. And Hi, it's this is a video about opening up a steam deck to replace one or more of the components inside it. Spe so this is a in-depth look of, of the teardown of the steam deck, uh, with commentary from valve this is valve they're yeah they, they're pretty funny they are pretty funny this is this it's not he sounds dry lift this latch unplug the flex cable here. i don't have any funny parts bookmark Remove sorry but these three screws <laughs> and then take the stick assembly out say something funny that's it say something funny now just reverse all that say something another funny. one back in let's move on to the ssd Fuck. we don't recommend replacing the included drive what we do recommend for increasing your storage capacity is the handy micro SD card slot. That's not funny, man. Anyways, it's a pretty good video. <laughs> See, I fix it has a better video now. Uh, who is also going to be an authorized parts seller? Seller, yeah, yeah. Valve is pretty good at uh, um, at keeping things uh, repairable by people, <laughs> by the average folks. They put out this video, not necessarily encouraging for you to tear down your Steam Deck, but if you have to, at least they could give you a detailed guide on how to do it. So that way they don't get one coming back for repairs and they have to fucking fix it. So <clears throat> yeah, Valve is pro right to repair, which, which is rad. You may not think it's rad, maybe it doesn't affect you, but it's rad for everyone. They even released the CAD files for the shells of the Steam Deck so you can adjust and print them yourself. Yeah, see, dude, it's fucking awesome. Uh, these are already cases you can buy and put the SSD so you can put a full-size one in. Oh, a full-size... Wait, what kind of SSD does it have? It's just a regular... Hold up, hold up. A full-size what? Oh, NVMe. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Just like you're just your 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 sweat here's here's your drive hang off the back of it. <laughs> I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. Okay, okay, okay. It wasn't what I was thinking. Sorry, I was on the wrong I was on the wrong plane. I was on the wrong year. Uh, I mean, for the U.S., it's, I mean, um, it's the smallest type of NVMe. There we go. Okay, okay, okay. So, so yeah, all the repair stuff is there, but you can't you can't repair yourself out of a ban. So if you're playing Destiny, I would highly recommend not using the steam deck to play it don't do it don't do it because as it states down here uh, steam deck and destiny zoom in a little bit destiny 2 is not supported for play on the steam deck or any system utilizing steam plays proton unless windows is installed and running players who attempt to launch destiny 2 on the steam deck through steam os or proton will be unable to enter the game and will be returned to their game library after a short time Players who are not accessing Destiny 2 through Windows and attempt to bypass the Steam OS Proton incompatibility will be met with a game ban. So you can't like make it work. <laughs>
you know. Uh, <clears throat> you need a holster for the drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like they have already working Linux version or anything. Oh wait, they do. It runs on Google. Bungie added to this yesterday. Uh, in the oh, what what did they added? Would they added something else to this? Did they add something else to this? Uh, Jesse, I didn't see anything new from this. This is from their site. So if they didn't update their site, then uh, this due to Sony. I don't know why this is specifically, but all I know is that they're saying they can't. But but. You're probably not buying this game to play Destiny, or buying the Steam Deck to specifically play Destiny, but the game is big enough that some folks probably are, so it's worth mentioning. Uh, it's, it's just a preemptive thing that they have done to avoid cheaters since it's new tech, and they just say this, they know that they're, they're dealing with. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they're if they're going to make adjustments to this so that way they can accept it, or if this is, uh, by allowing the Steam Deck to be operable, they're also allowing potential for people to interface with whatever that protocol is in order to apply cheats, right? Um, cancel Bungie, boo! <laughs> I know. Uh, and that is fully compatible with Steam with Steam OS. Well, they're saying Proton, whatever Proton is. I don't know what that is. Sorry, guys. I'm just I just say the words and act real confident when I say them, right? But if we go back and you ask me what they mean, I don't know what that means, man. So, <laughs> outside of like you know an atomic level, I really don't know what that means. Uh, when this anything happened, both Sony and Bungie said that Bungie would have control over their games that they put it on. Oh yeah, huh? Hmm. Put it as a Steam compatibility compatibility layer. Okay. Yeah, fake it till you make it. <laughs> it's a framework for apps. Any app similar to Discord. Got you. Got you. Got you. Brute, thank you so much. Alerts turned off. You're the best though. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> moving on. We just get to the jacket now, the Star Lord jacket. I have no fucking way. Oh my god, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's that's so it's so corny. It's so bad. Uh, but I'll support. I mean, I support a Mass Effect. I'll support a Mass Effect jacket, no problem. But that shit is just too tacky. Star Lord only. <clears throat> get a Doctor Strange cape instead. I should. All right, take a drink. Oh, Discord is Electron. Yeah, guys, don't mix up your protons, electrons, man. You know what happens when you do that? You get a neutral charge, man. You get an electron. You get a neutron. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so moving on. <sighs> Epic Games. Epic Games, boy. Nah, I, I, I'm over my Epic Games bullshit. They stopped, they stopped being super dicks. But they did make a move on a company that I did enjoy using and I still will continue to use called Bandcamp. So, still don't like them. That's right, still don't like them. So, Epic has acquired Bandcamp. So, we don't know exactly what this means yet. People are... People have expressed worry that Bandcamp is now under the um, the Epic uh, umbrella. People have expressed dis dis expressed disgust about this. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why they bought Bandcamp, but it could be for like fifty different reasons. It's true, it's true. But Blue Cav slipped me a link, and I thought it was very informative. And I think you guys would also do well to listen to me read it to you. Okay, so cuddle up real good. I'm gonna read it for you. It says, I mean. Look at all the acquisitions for the past few years. They own Kixel, photogrammetry assets, Easy Anti Cheat, Sketchfab, ArtStation, Cubic Motion, Rad Game Tools, and Captain Reality. They want to all but guarantee that most developers have to use one of their services to develop their games. They need to get paid for every game that's out there. I'm not sure how big Bandcamp is for licensing video game music, but that's just another avenue of income added to their portfolio. Vertical integration, whoa, he goes on about all this stuff. But it makes sense. This is a very, this is a very, this is, this makes a lot of sense. Uh, when I first saw it, I was like, I don't know why they're doing this. It's weird, but we'll leave it alone. There's other shit going on in the world right now. Um, <clears throat> making a game development, game development monopoly. Exactly. They're trying to uh, just make it so that you can just, and he says, right, Epic subscription services incoming. Yeah. Game developer battle pass. I mean, this is exactly, exactly. That's how it works. Right. So no matter what, you'd have to do some kind of transaction with Epic in order to develop your game is what their goal is. Ultimately, um, 
So for me, as somebody who is an artist, and I know that this probably conflicts with some of your guys' perspective on this, specifically Miss. The Bear Not Bite a Goat Out Miss. Uh, for me, let me show you guys something here. Uh, did it log me out? It did. Well, let me log back in real quick and find this page. Oh my God. All the crosswalks. That's a crosswalk. That's a crosswalk. That's a crosswalk. That's a crosswalk. Did I win? Did I get to log in now? <laughs> Sorry, I had to make sure I tell him I wasn't a bot. <clears throat> so, when you make an album or a single or whatever and you go to release it, your goal is to get it out onto as many platforms as you can, right? You can directly you can directly distribute to certain platforms for sure. You could just go and just throw them on there and, and they'll let you upload them directly. But this is this is my last album, Arsenal, right? Is it right here? Arsenal, you can see the date, everything, the UPC, all that good stuff. Uh, and this is the people, this is the services that I submit to. So I'm already submitting my music to a million different platforms. And while I feel like I really like the kind of like, you know, it just felt like it was kind of a small mom pop business of Bandcamp, I can't be upset about Epic. Because I'm already, I mean, TikTok, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, everything's on here. So, like, as an artist, why wouldn't I want my stuff on more platforms or accessible for more, for more, uh, for more platforms? You get a lot more, you get a lot more money from Bandcamp, though. You do. You get a lot more money from Bandcamp, for sure. Right? I'm just saying, though, I want my music on as many platforms as possible. Otherwise, I wouldn't even put on Bandcamp to begin with. So, if Bandcamp's going to make my music available for licensing, they're adding a service to... For me, whether, you know, for games or for licensing for games or whatever they end up doing. Uh, that's what this service does for me. CD Baby does for me. Um, I'm trying really hard to figure out like what the downside could be if they, but if, cause that wouldn't, that wouldn't uh, 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 result in a mass exodus because artists are very finicky people, right? Musicians are very, very, very finicky people. When you make a piece of art, when you make a song uh, and you want to let people listen to it. You put it out. And if, if you feel like you're being affronted for some reason, or if you feel like you're being taken advantage of, and you have the, you have the option to pull your music or pull your piece of art and go somewhere else, you'll do it because that thing you created is yours. That's your baby. And you're allowing somebody else to make that available elsewhere. So <clears throat> if they do anything that would impede me being able to get my music out to everybody, I mean, fucking hell, look at 10 cent music is on here too. <laughs> like, so if they, if they do anything that would impede the progress of the 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 uh, me getting my music out to everybody, that's when you'll probably see people like mass exodusing and going to some other site, or just licensing or just uh just uh, uh distributing under their own label name or something, which is a bit more of a pain in the ass. You can also download the music in nearly every file type uh, from Bankit, which is me is a big thing. Yes, all this stuff should remain, right? Like I, I'm I'm saying like I expect that they will not do something stupid and remove features that we enjoy. Yeah, like Flack. Like Flack. Um, too bad one of those platforms you got doesn't include physical CDs. Yeah, you have to go through a separate service for that, unfortunately. But um, but yeah, we already have our music all over the place. We want it as many platforms as possible. If this is an opportunity to get my music into games without me having to necessarily go out and bug people and indie developers, like, hey, can you you, you can you want to do my music in your game? Like, yeah, it's it's this is to me, this is like almost a no-brainer as a part of this package of Epic buying Bandcamp. If Epic, if, if they change it and it goes for the worse, then we're going to make a huge fucking stink out of it, right? If they add another payout option that is not just PayPal, that'd actually be a good thing. I don't care. I don't and can't have PayPal, but I don't trust Epic. <clears throat> yeah, if, it, if, if, if we have to use like our Epic logins or something like that to get into Bandcamp, I'm going to throw a stink on that, but that's probably an eventuality. Although I feel like they probably shouldn't. That's... It's Art, Art Station doesn't use Epic logins. So yeah, I don't think they should do that. Um, oh, they will mess it up. Epic is basically Tencent and they're deep uh, deep in Spotify and such. They will kill independent music selling. Epic has harmonics, so new rock band bandcamp integration. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Mav, like, yeah, it's, just, it's possible. Free monthly albums. Exactly. That's that's the first thing people say. I can't wait for my free monthly albums. <laughs> Dicks. But yeah, it's to me, it feels like this is this is an op a potentially good opportunity. I didn't immediately jump on and say, oh, this is bad. Right. Because I feel like there's opportunity here where we could get more exposure to artists uh, while 
simultaneously also making our music accessible to everybody who wants to get it through Bandcamp through the normal means. But if you've ever used the Bandcamp um, app, they really need help. They really, really need help. I'm not saying that Epic is, is the answer, but if this is an influx of cash flow for them to, uh, 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 you know, make you'll give us better features for the fucking app. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah, the app is just is not good. It could use some work. It could use some work. Now there are some. There's some folks who bring up some pretty good points. Uh, let me see. I'm great points actually. I don't want to say pretty good. It's a great points. Um, says so thinking about how. Uh, okay, here you go. Thinking about how at Bob's Red Mill, where my brother works, the 80 year old owner was like, every day I had buyout offers, and since I needed to think about succession, I gave the company to the employees. They worked hard for my success. You never have to agree to acquisition. Um, and he says he goes on to to, to talk about um, other companies who. Uh, have been purchased. So he says Etsy promised to be a shop of ha for handmade items went public and now it allows drop shipping, bootleg and tripled fees. Patreon has been getting worse similarly. Uh, just about every place that is built up by creatives posting there goes public and investors come to parasite us. This is also true on the other side of the whatever uh, with uh, uh, with only fans, you know, like we've seen a lot of 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 very complex issues arise from only fans because of their growth. They've gotten too big for their britches and they start trying to do wild corporate things and then everybody shoots them down. Um, so this is so this is it's it's true. It's true that a lot of these sites are built on creatives. They're built on like Twitch. Twitch is built by creatives. YouTube built by creatives. Anything music related. I mean, it's, it's more of a niche thing. SoundCloud built by creatives. It's not built by, you know, the, the industry, the media industry or anything. It's built by regular people like us. Um, <clears throat> wild corporate only fans. Bandcamp made finding new music really easy. Yes, it did. I, I love Bandcamp for game soundtracks, um, for obscure things you can't get on Spotify. Uh, there's like really old pitch shifter stuff. I think, I think I own like pitch shifter, like live stuff. I don't think it's on Spotify. Shit like that. Um, there's another there's another one here too that talks a little bit about the uh vcs so basically says this my dear here you go this my dear musician friends is a private equity firm's exit strategy on investment in band camp so a you're not wrong in feeling mangled by greed and b i'm going to tell you in broad terms what's behind the curtain so i'll just summarize it for you but effectively what it is is like when you first when you first have a startup you're looking for people to invest money into it right um and so you get like you know venture capitalists some some with a lot of money uh, who will drop you know between 50 50 000 and like millions of dollars but their expectation is to get paid back they're not just dropping because they like the product right that's part of it maybe right but they see the value in it and so they want their money back and so a lot of times what they essentially want to guarantee is that there's going to be an exit plan so when you go to get your your you know do your rounds for VC funding, um, you you usually have to present to them a, a, an exit plan. Like, what is your exit plan? So, how do you when you get to a certain point, what are you gonna do? How do I make my money back? And the exit plan is typically we're gonna sell or be acquired, and then we'll use that money to get to to basically pay off that debt that we've accumulated from the VC. So this is where we're at with Bandcamp. Bandcamp was a company that had a VC that wanted their money back basically and so that they uh they had an exit plan which was being bought out and they're bought out by epic i don't know who else could have bought them out spotify that would have been the worst thing to happen with spotify youtube probably would have been 10 times worse than spotify <laughs> because they would have just shut it down right so at least with like epic it's like well i didn't really have that in my bingo list bingo card but like yeah i guess so it's weird but sure better than some other company maybe question mark so this is this is just a case of just how businesses are formed right now. Startups it's like you have an exit plan usually involves selling the company at, that you built up off the backs of other people who are using your product. Uh, Elias talked about his company being handled uh, handed to his employees might be a Canadian thing, uh, which would result into the company getting valued. And then the employees would need to pay a tax percentage based on that value, which could come down to millions. So just passing a company on isn't easy. Yeah, it's, it's like an inheritance thing. You get taxed on the valuation of the inheritance itself. It's like if you get a car or something like that, you have to pay the taxes on the car or some weird shit. <clears throat> so, so yeah, this is, uh, 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 we will hear more from this in the future. This is, this is, uh, they're probably not going to touch it for probably a year. And then we're going to start seeing changes happen. And I don't know what those are going to be, if they're going to be a, you know, 
a licensing thing they offer to people a month. Uh, they already have a monthly subscription. There's already a monthly subscription that you could pay for. Um, so all that stuff already exists. I think Epic is the best solution given Sweeney's opinions on creator focused platforms. Spotify would just gut it and Google would too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is, this is, uh, this is the lesser of several evils. <laughs> of several e evils you don't use art stations so i don't know if anything changed with them i wish crane was here crane uses art station um but uh <clears throat> yeah it's i don't use art station enough to, to quote on that but yeah it, it i haven't heard anything about them making any drastic changes there and it does seem like sweeney does have creators in mind with some of the other things they do but you know they still like to make money <laughs> they still have business interests you know they still have business interests move it on Moving on. This is a this is a good one. We haven't talked about NFTs in a while. <sighs> Let me find something real quick for you guys. I want to show you guys the future of NFTs. This is no more, please. <laughs> this this is Pixelmon. Pixelmon is a procedurally generated uh, NFT that you can use for whatever it is you want to use, right? Typical NFT shit, right? Super cute little little voxel things. Oh, it's so cute, right? That's your little character. Uh, and they had uh, an investment of like pe basically people would pay in order to, in order to uh, reserve their Pixelmon. Um. And they tease. There's so many teases coming out, and they're they're great. Some of them are pretty great. It's like, what is this? Is this the uh, uh, let me see. This is the yeah. Okay, this is like the, I guess the game that's supposed to exist in. Um, but yeah, here's some of the characters. They're super cute, right? Well, they did the drop, and they did not look anywhere near what they were advertised as. <clears throat> So this is what people got. Now, keep in mind, this is what you get. You bought this. You own the NFT for this. You own the piece of paper or file that says that you own this thing. That's yours, whatever it is, right? Three ETH for some of these things. Yeah, I see every single one was three ETH, actually. Three ETH, three ETH right now, by the way, is $7,500. So... Between seventy five hundred and eight thousand. <laughs> Seventy million dollars worth of Ethereum was raised. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't even right click on that abomination. No, I I, I hear you. So this person, Zach, decided to dig a little bit deeper, right? Follow the story a little bit more. And it says, not sure how the team can make any excuses here. And it says, uh, uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We made a horrible mistake. We have endeavored to try something new and not done it before on OpenSea with our 3D Pixelmon beyond the regular image or video. Here's what the most Pixelmon currently look like, blah, blah, blah. To put it simple, we are sorry. This is unacceptable. We felt pressured to push reveal. Uh, and the reality is we were, weren't ready to push the artwork. This does not represent the brand. And we and we will fix this and let many people know, uh, let, let many people, ah, uh, that, <laughs> We will fix this as we have let many people down with this reveal. Jesus Christ, can't read. Uh, and <laughs> so this guy starts tracking where the money's going. So money's coming in, money's going out. He's tracking all the sales. He said, this person received 400 ETH from the multi-sig and went on a huge NFT buying spree. 400 ETH times $2,500, okay? Um Oh, that's pretty easy math. That's like $100,000, right? <laughs> so the team states uh, uh, that it says, oh, that's their dev wallet. Oh, there's a dev wallet. They're buying some shit for whatever. Um, <clears throat> and it shows here like, yeah, this is what it's supposed to look like when it came. It was the actual gameplay footage. And then, um, and it's nothing at all the way it looks. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then we have, here we go. Proof of the team buying assets from Unity. So they're supposed to be like creating frameworks and then generating like unique variations based off of those frameworks. But then come to find out that people are just finding the uh, the assets on on the uh, the Unity store. <laughs> and and they keep going. It says a Pixel Mall Discord, he claims to use his art team, but we see that it's not the case at all. And it just goes it goes on and on and on. Here we go. Here's worse for Pixelmon. So here's asset store, Unity Asset Store. Q snake. Oh, sneak peek. It's the same thing. It's the same fucking thing. 
Did they, they didn't even change the color. Straight up, yeah. They bought, they purchased assets from the Unity store and then made a, well, it's it's not just the GIF, right? It's supposed to be, it's an interactable, uh, it's interactive like scene with your, and you could, I could export a GIF from that or whatever, but. <sighs> so people got scammed, <clears throat> like super scammed. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so more, more Unity assets. The so Unity asset there. Unity asset there. Yeah. So <laughs> interactable shit. Insert Pam to office me. Yeah, they look exactly the same. What a disaster. What a disaster. So Pixelmon Media uh, or Pixelmon, uh, and they're they're trying to save face as best they can, but it seems like they're probably gonna pack up and just leave. What's the last zero? Twitter space. So they 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 had a Twitter spaces 16 hours ago. I didn't attend that. Uh, it says the Pixelmon reveal is unacceptable. Unacceptable. This is what our Pixelmon look like in game. Our NFT art failed to reflect this, despite the 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 the, the fud, the the fear, the fear, uh, uh, the fear, uncertainty, and disinformation no disrespect no uh dis disinformation i believe um uh will not I, I will not go anywhere doubt thank you doubt the goal hasn't changed the funds will still be used to build our game we'll see the project through so they're saying they're going to see the project through they have a roadmap. they're saying this is what it looks like in the game or sorry in the yeah in the in the environment um and it's not all the way it exported it could have been a bad export and maybe that's why it looks like like trash right uh or it could just be you know they're just saving face so they could disappear oh, there's another one yeah look it's the same fucking thing <laughs> 159 dollars they probably sold like how many variations of this thing crazy bad export could be <laughs> export through the wood chipper <laughs> or it could just be trash yeah that's true it could just be trash very 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 <laughs> Very plausible. That could just be fucking trash, uh, but they say that they said they're gonna see this one through. They're gonna see this one through to the end and make sure that everybody gets what they paid for. Nine thousand to ten thousand U.S. dollars worth of Unity assets that have been converted. It's been converted to voxel, man. It has direct twelve issues. That's our exporter, man. Something's going on. Something's going on. Um, wrapping things up. Final story today. GMG Union is going on strike and they're asking you to help it. The best way you can help GMG is by not going to the following websites. Gizmodo, Jalopnik, Jezebel, Lifehacker, The Root, and Kotaku. So do your part. Don't click on Kotaku links. Can you guys do that? Could you guys do that? I think we got it. I think we got it. <laughs> Trash sites. Pretty easy not to go to those. So yeah, they're I'll try to restrain myself. Yeah, they're looking I mean, they're fighting, they're fighting for union. They want they want recognition for that, and that's totally fine. That's cool. That's cool. But you know, I'll do my part and not go into those sites. No problem. <laughs> what will I ever do? I've been doing my part for their entire existence then. All right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's it for the news. Thank you so much for watching. You think I look great in a Star Lord jacket? Bitch, I'll kill you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B. And this is chat. Thank you, chat. For hanging out. And being my people today. The best. Hang out for a little bit. We gotta smoke this thing. Alright? Hold up. <laughs>